carrot. Oh, man. Wowie, wow, wow, wow. That was fun. I hope a number of you guys out there got to see the eclipse. Fortunately, we were in an area of totality and it's never going to happen again in my lifetime. But man, that was so much fun. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about drawing today. Uh, I have a watercolor channel, but you know, it, I can never overstate how important I think drawing is. I'm always telling people to draw more. I'm telling myself to draw more. You know, drawing focuses on value and form. What I'm looking at here is Strokes of Genius. Strokes of Genius is a an annual, sort of like splashes for watercolor. Strokes of Genius is the best of drawing. Now, these are not the most recent. Uh, a lot of times I'll, I'll go through Amazon and look at art books and especially art books that are on sale. I got these for f five bucks each, uh, not including shipping, of course. But um, but I forget myself to go through and inspire myself in drawing, form, shadow, proportion. It's a direct correlation. The better you can do those things, the better you'll be able to paint. You can master all of the watercolor techniques that you want to. And mastering the techniques will not help you render any better. Draw, draw, draw. I'm not going to go through all of these Strokes of Genius books, but they are just... I mean, you can see uh, this is colored pencil here. A lot of the stuff in here is very tight, very realistic. But more than that, I think just incredible inspiration for training your eye to see form and value. Proportion, perspective. And just like with a lot of art, it's, it's no different with watercolor. Um, drawing, the more you do it, the more of the beginning amateurish sort of tendencies you tend to shed bit by bit because of discovery. I have people all the time tell me, you know, how do I draw this? How do I get this effect? Or how do I get that effect? Everything, everything is value, form, color. You know, how do you get the, the lighting effect around the outside rim of this fox? You know, it looks like he's being lit from behind and these hairs are glowing how do you do that how do you get that effect well that's not an effect that is light that is value it's observation it's form it's contrast between the surrounding colors it is the same as every single other thing on this subject and the only way to get that to observe what that value is in relation to this in relation to that what that color is Drawing helps you do that. It helps you observe. It'll make you a better everything when it comes to art. It'll make you better at composition. It'll make you quicker. It'll help you simplify better. It'll help you cut through things like, like color. Color is important, and I don't want you to think I don't mean that it is, but color is not nearly as important as value or form. So draw, draw, draw. Well, since we were talking about drawing, I thought I would do a little demo here. It's been something I've been wanting to do for a while. A lot of people either don't know or forget that you can actually draw or shade with watercolor, just like you can a pencil. It's tedious, just like a pencil, but I mean, most of us know how to shade with a pencil you know it's just varying pressure get the idea you get these pencil strokes but you can you can shade you know you can get some very subtle shading with a pencil okay something most people 
are very common with. I mean, this is the way I learned to draw when I was in fifth grade. I, I, I use different kinds. I use graphite. I use some charcoal. It basically is strokes. It's, it's pencil strokes. What's not as well known is that you can do that with watercolor. The technique is pretty much a dry brush technique. I like to do both. I like to fill in values, you know, and then go over and do shading like a pencil. But for the purposes of this demo, I'm just going to do uh, some parts of this bird to get across the point. The idea is that your brush has got to be very dry. I just have enough moisture in my brush to loosen up. This is a big puddle of paint that I made earlier and then it's all dried and now this is dried paint. So in order for dry brush to work I like to use this technique, have a dried out palette and get just enough moisture in my brush to loosen it up. So now I have the equivalent of like a pencil or a charcoal pencil. Just enough pigment in my brush and just enough moisture to rub it off and you can just start shading that way and if too much is coming off and it ends up basically coming out like a wet wash then dry your brush some more dry your brush until you're barely getting any off and if you need to um, get lighter paint get grayer paint that would be sort of the equivalent of going from a HB pencil to a 2B to a 4B to a 6B and you can build this just like you can with pencil. Now as I said, um, I prefer to put down some tonal washes before, before even doing this technique. But you can, you can basically do the whole thing this way. And it's a bit tedious, but no more tedious than if you were to do this as a tightly shaded pencil drawing. It's great on textural subjects like this bird with the feathers. It just allows me to get, you know, build a nice little uh, textural piece. And I, I will go, usually I'll go until my brush is so dry that I'm not even lifting pigment off the palette anymore. And another tip for doing this is I, I like to use synthetics, all synthetics. This is a, a Mimic Kalinsky Creative Mark. This is from uh, Jerry's Autorama. I think Cheap Joe's has one also, uh, a series of, of Mimic synthetics. They're fine. Really any kind of synthetic is fine. They don't hold or retain water as well as some of the natural hair brushes, so they're actually better for these dry brush techniques. Now this is Strathmore 400. I actually much prefer doing this on something like arches, but this is my bird book. Point is, is I am shading just like I have a pencil. And now I finally am too dry to, to get enough of this moisture, so I, you can't see what I'm doing off off camera but I am dipping about this much of the tip into water just just a tiny bit just enough to again turn my my brush into the equivalent of a graphite pencil it's a patient process the the nice thing is that you can go back and usually if you get something that's that is too pronounced a stroke you can wet it and smear it a little bit. And one of the things I do is I work from dark to light like you normally would with pencil but it's even more important this way because when you first grab paint on your brush it's going to be darkest and as you start uh, shading with your brush tip you start starving the brush of its pigment and it gets lighter and lighter. So in addition to pre it, it sort of mimics the same thing as pressure does on a pencil. So that's one thing that's a little different you have to get used to. But it's a good thing to try, if, especially if you're really, really comfortable with pencil and pencil shading. Um, anybody can do this. If, if you're really good at pencil shading, you're going to be able to do this with little or no problem. And the key is you're going to be very tempted, especially if you are somewhat experienced at watercolor, I've done a good bit of watercolor, you're going to be very tempted to keep going back and wetting your brush wetter. Uh, to thoroughly try this technique, resist that temptation, just see how much you can do with the driest brush possible. And you see here I'm rubbing and I'm getting almost nothing so my brush is just about dried out. But I'm getting some very subtle shading. And again I went back to my water and I put about that much of the tip 
in the water. Just very little. Just enough water to loosen up the paint on the palette. As I said, it's a bit of a tedious process and it's something you probably only want to use in the most detailed situations where you're really trying to do very detailed work. As I also said, just to reiterate, it is, it, it's great to use this in conjunction with some base washes. Get some of the base modeling down. And it's, it's more typically how I would use it. I thought that what I might do is, is a bird drawing where I just detail part of this bird. This is a yellow rumped warbler. We get them in our area, but they're sort of uh, migratory. So they come through like in the spring. They don't go on the bird feeders, so I really have to hunt for them if I see them. And I thought I would just detail this part here, and then the rest would just be a drawing. Uh, but I want to bring out little shocks of yellow. It's mostly a gray, blue-gray to tawny gray bird with these shocks of yellow. There's yellow back here on the rump, but you can't really see it. And when you're done, you know, if you do the whole piece like this, it will even sort of look like pencil. Somebody who maybe is not real familiar with these techniques will look at that and probably think that you did it in pencil. Or colored pencil because there is a, a little bit of color shift in these grays that I'm using. I think right in through here is where I'm going to have my color blend out into line. And I'm going to go back in here and strengthen all this line work. And here you can see, as I start to increase the size of my washes a little bit, they're still relatively dry. Because it is fairly dry, my, my brush starves quickly, and I'm, I'm just rubbing it out, basically, until it, it is dry. I don't know verbally if any of that made sense, but you really kind of have to experiment with the dryness of your brush. And the, the temptation and the, the biggest mistake right uh, immediately will be getting too much water. And again, my palette is dry. That is critical. I don't have a palette with a puddle of water. I have a dry palette. And when I'm getting pigment here, my brush is barely damp and I'm just rubbing up the pigment. That's the difference in this technique. I can go back and touch the palette and it still feels dry. There's just enough moisture in my brush to rub that pigment off the surface of the palette. And you can, I have mostly darks here, but you can get all sorts of diluted, you know, gradations. You can actually go quite a long time without re-wetting your brush. That's even with this small synthetic. So now I'm going to just go ahead and put in the, the yellow. And I'm painting a little less dry with the yellow. Um, mainly because I just need to fill a lot of that color in. It's still relatively dry compared to uh, standard watercolor techniques. But a more or less flat wash. I'm trying to pull out some highlight there stroke in some shadow here on the underneath. You can see how I was able to build these values down. I still need to tighten up this eye ring. It's a little too wide. It's basically adjustments now. It's a great technique for plants, botanicals, um, I, I want to say flowers. I guess if you're doing a flower and a botanical uh, type technique or look it would be good for flowers I, I think generally for florals I would probably prefer to do a little more fluid technique but great great for birds and wildlife just really great and for plants done in a, a very botanical style get some really delicate feather work using this technique
And so now I'm going to go in and just add some line work. Well, I think for now I'm just about done. As usual, I'll look at it for a while, for a day or two, but this is just a really cool and satisfying technique, and I hope you'll give it a try. Got any questions? Let me know down in the comments. We will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.